And the reason for a clearing conversation is to clear the things that are piled on top of it. So at our core, we are in love. We all want love. We all want to give love and receive love. I, I firmly, firmly believe this. And it's just a remembering that that is our core. All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Embodied Relationship Podcast with Brady Mack. I'm, of course, your host, Mr. Brady Mack. I've got my jean jacket on today. This makes me feel like I'm very at home. Uh, Some people call this the Canadian tuxedo. I'm, of course, here in Australia. And it's not that it makes me feel at home because people call it the Canadian tuxedo. Makes me feel at home because it's got a nice furry inside and despite being in Australia, it's been pretty mild weather lately and I needed something to have around the house that I can feel like I can work in. It's like durable, but also really comfy and keeps me warm and kind of obsessing over uh, materials that feel good these days. I I think that's something that comes with age. You know, when I was a kid, a young teen running around, I was always for style. It wouldn't matter if it, if it made sense, I would wear, you know, a t-shirt in the winter sometimes because I thought it was, it was cool. But you get older and you, you hear your parents talk about it. Like, no, like it's comfort. This is why you do it. It must be so uncomfortable. Now you get a little bit older and you think, you know what, comfort is key. Um, And you can be comfortable and stylish at the same time. So really happy to be wearing this and feeling very comfy, very cozy. Uh, I'm not quite in my permanent home yet. I'm still in an Airbnb here and I will be for another week. And then really excited because Loa and myself are moving to our dream home in the rainforest here in Byron Bay. And it's got sauna, hot tub, uh, cold plunge, a few different offices, an art room. Like it's incredible. I'll give you guys a tour when we do get there. But over to the conversation that I really wanted to have with you today. And It's how to make it through a difficult time in your marriage. And here's the thing. If you've been in marriage or long-term relationship long enough, you're gonna have difficult times. It's just part of the deal. It's part of the deal. And the difficult times might come from the difficulty in your guys' relationship. Maybe you've gone through a rough patch or something rocky has happened, or there's been mistrust at some point or there's been hurt that is unforgiven at some point. Look, it also might be that you have difficulty in different parts of your life, like your career or finding home. That's a big topic for Loa and myself at the moment. And of course we had in the first year of our relationship, tons of transitions where I was back in Canada. I mean, that was difficult for us to be on different sides of the world. And then uh, some difficulties in the community in Bali and having to relocate there or choosing to relocate there. Like these were difficult times and really big decisions that we had to make that weren't uh necessarily like enjoyable like it was a tough time for some of of these bigger decisions Um, and then of course now we're still on opposite sides of the world just different opposite sides Uh, Loa's in Germany and I'm here in Australia and she'll be back next week which I'm very excited about Um, but you know let's face it like life happens and life has suffering in it Uh, I love to cite Buddhist texts and, you know, the first noble truth in Buddhism is life is suffering. And then it goes on to say that your suffering can be reduced. And then it gives eight path 
eight, eight steps along the path rather uh, to reduce the suffering. And so we can apply that to our own lives, but we can also apply it to marriage or long-term relationships. Um, so the first piece is to remember that, you know, we all go through these periods of difficulty or, you know, sometimes the difficult times, they don't have to be these big catastrophic experiences, but sometimes it can just be that feeling of being stuck of like, oh, I just, you know, like the tires are just spinning in the mud. I can't quite grip life and move forward yet. Um, and that's oftentimes because we have, we are stuck on something, right? We're stuck on the past. Something in our past is keeping us back there, even though we're in the present moment. So the, the key to that is getting really present. And sometimes that means looking back on, you know, the past, what is it that, that really hurt me? Or what is it that my nervous system, my mind, my heart is stuck on in the past? Or what is that my partner is stuck on in the past? And then how do we process that individually or together? So, you know, it might be something small. I like to use this example just because I kind of think it's funny and it's, it's small, but it, it's relatable. And the example is, you know, someone forgetting to pick up the organic oat milk and they go grocery shopping. And, you know, if, if someone forgot to do that at one point in time, it may be that their partner does not trust them to pick that up again or to do the groceries again. And of course, this is just one example that could translate into many, many other examples of someone forgetting to do something or someone being out of integrity or someone being late or fill in the blank, right? But if that is the case, if that is the case, it's really important for that person to acknowledge what it is that, that they've done wrong and the way that, or, or the, not necessarily that they've done wrong, but they, they haven't done right. <laughs> and so what also is important is if that has affected you, say, you're supposed to pick up organic oat milk and actually they picked up dairy milk. Well, if I don't drink dairy and that's gonna upset me, you know, now I can't have my smoothie the next day, which for me is a ritual, right? It's, it's a ceremony every morning to have my green smoothie with avocado, with spirulina, chlorella, the organic oat milk, we've got the banana, the blueberries, and we've got some chia seeds, some almonds, and uh, what else do I have in there? I'm looking over towards my kitchen. Um, and avocado, I put a full avocado in there every day which this is just a total side note tangent, but a secret for an amazing way to keep avocados fresh is keep them in the fridge. So you, you buy like a ton of avocados, you know how they always go stale really quickly and they're either not ripe enough or too ripe really quickly. Keep them all in the fridge. The day before you wanna use one, take one out. And then when you eat it that day, take the next one out and it'll be ready exactly 24 hours later. It's incredible, it's changed my life. So <laughs> there's an avocado tip for everyone. Okay, so <clears throat> it's important that whatever it is that's gone wrong, the oat milk, the showing up late, the not showing up, the way in which someone shows up, if this is bothering you in relationship, it's important that you have a clearing conversation clearing conversation. So a clearing conversation requires uh, a few different things. Um, and this might be a clearing between you and your partner, or this might be a clearing between you and someone else. It doesn't matter, you know, if it, this is your colleague, your boss, your friend, your family member, your intimate partner, a clearing conversation always can fall under this, this same guideline, right? And 
The reason why we have clearing conversations is to come back to connection, to come back to intimacy. Um, usually, always, actually, always, there is love and intimacy and there is blissful experiences in our soul. If we can just clear the things that are piled on top of that, we can get to it. And the reason for a clearing conversation is to clear the things that are piled on top of it. So at our core, we are in love. We all want love. We all want to give love and receive love. I, I firmly, firmly believe this. And it's just a remembering that that is our core. And on top of it, there's oftentimes a large pile of, of shit, right? There's a large pile of identification and righteousness and ego and uh, greed and guilt and shame and all of the things that, you know, we've learned as a society. But underneath all of that, there is so much love, so much abundance, so much clarity and certainty. And it's just a matter of clearing all of that. So co clearing conversation is to, to get to that core. And it's, you know, a beautiful thing to remember that that's within every human being that you meet. Every human being that you meet, that is their core. And just how do we get to it? How do we get to it? Well, oftentimes it comes from a clearing conversation. So let's get into that because clearing conversation can be a big topic, right? It's, it can be, well, it can be heated at times because when we're digging through those layers of greed and jealousy and doubt and uncertainty and shame. I mean, those are pretty, pretty spicy topics, right? So it can inevitably bring up some stuff. And the longer that that's been a pattern for us, the jealousy, the blame, the guilt, the shame, all of that stuff, the longer that's been a pattern, the deeper and stronger those, those layers are that we have to drill through. <laughs> and so the first step in all of this is creating a container for this conversation, right? Because some of us were like, I, I'm like this sometimes. It's like, I wanna just dive in. I'm like, I wanna get to the love. I wanna get to the core of someone. Like, I, I know it's in there. Like, let's just fucking get to it and, and like rip those layers apart. You know, that's that that can be tempting. And sometimes we see the love underneath all of those layers more than the person who we're seeing it in can see it in themselves. So what we need to do is set up a container for this. And this is the container that everything else falls under. So the way that we do that is firstly, making sure we're in the right environment. We have ample time and then we state our intention and we make sure the person feels safe. And these are really the, the key pieces for creating a container, make sure we're in the right environment. So of course, you know, a public place could be maybe not the right environment, you know, on, on, uh, on a, a roller coaster. It's like, it's probably not the best time to have a deep conversation, you know? <laughs> so, at home, maybe you have some space on the couch or set up a yoga mat and sit down on the floor. Um, consider your environment. What is it that you're allowing in uh, to this conversation? What stimulus are gonna be there, right? If there is um, someone or something that's triggering for that person, it might not be the best environment. You know, if you're visiting family and family triggers you, probably not a great idea to, you know, open up this, this big, deep conversation around family, you know? So have some degree of privacy in this conversation. Make sure you have enough time or set the appropriate amount of time. So it may be that you are trying to get this conversation done in like 20 minutes. It's not realistic, right? This might be 
a long conversation. It might be a series of long conversations. It might be a series of long conversations over a long period of time. Like this might be, you know, when we're talking about getting to the core of someone's being, getting to the love and abundance that they carry within their soul. I mean, it's not just like, let's do a weekend course. You know, this is, this is like a long process. It might take weeks, it might take months. Um, so consider how can we create a container? And it may be also that you bring someone else in to support that container. So make sure you have the adequate amount of time, the right environment. And, and with time, you might say, let's set aside one hour for this conversation. And at the end of it, we'll wrap up the conversation and I'll tell you how to wrap up just at the end of this. Um, so you wrap up the conversation within that hour. So you know, you've set that amount of time, you've done your work in that appropriate amount of time. And then you, you pause, you breathe, you recalibrate, you enjoy dinner together maybe, or, or something else. So knowing that time is a, a really important one. Um, you want to make sure that the person feels safe. So a few things that, you know, helps ease this conversation into safety are considering who is it that might be hearing the conversation? Like, is it confidential? Can you keep it just between you two? Can you make it a space that isn't judge judgment free? Cause I think judgment is part of human nature. I don't, I don't think it's even possible to have judgment free space. But I, I think blame free space is, is something that's, that's really a beautiful thing to create where you're not blaming the other for it. And you can speak to that and say, I'm not blaming you for this. I just want to understand you more and then go into what it is that you really want to understand from that human. And when we think about safety, there might be other things that are involved, right? And the interesting thing about safety is safety is actually a perception. It's, it's not necessarily inherently true. If myself and another person are sitting on this couch, one of us might feel safe and one of us might not feel safe, but it has nothing to do with the environment itself. It has everything to do with our nervous system and the way that we perceive the environment around us. So establishing safety can be one of the most deeply opening, um, the, 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 one of the ways to most deeply open your partner. And the way that you can establish what feels safe for them is by asking, what is it that would help you feel more safe in this conversation? It's a beautiful question to ask. It's a beautiful question to ask. So I'd recommend setting the container in that way. And by the way, this first conversation of an hour long, it might just be setting the container for the other conversations to come. Establishing safety, making sure you have the right environment, making sure you have enough time, making sure it's confidential. Right? So once you've established the container, you can start to dive into the, the core of the conversation. And, you know, when there's difficult times, oftentimes what I have noticed in humans is the difficult times are much more difficult when we're trying to do things alone. Meaning, if we have the opportunity to share with another how difficult things are for us, it loosens the load. It makes things a little bit easier. And what else is partnership for than to loosen the load for each other, to walk each other home, to enjoy each other's company, right? And through difficult times, 
one thing that can happen is we, we try to bottle up or tough through on our own. This was a this is a pattern of mine at times. And something that I'm working really deeply to repattern is just sharing myself more, sharing the difficult times, and whether that's through a men's group or it's with Loa or it's through you know journaling um, or it's through sharing on podcasts or social media, you know, just the experience of sharing it out loud or in therapy or with my family. Yeah, like there's many different avenues that I have to share about myself and my struggles. And I recommend that, that you do one consideration when we're putting all of our struggles on the table and our partners putting all of their struggles on the table is remembering that that is the first step. The first step is putting things on the table. But if we just put things on the table, then we look at the table and we've just got like a, a table full of shit, right? We've got a table full of our troubles and our problems. And we're like, this does not look appealing. I don't want to sit at this table and eat any of this stuff. It's like, it's a lot, right? And so making sure that we don't get stuck on the first step of just sharing all of our troubles, but actually we take it to the next step. The next step is considering the solution to those, those pieces, right? Or, or it might not even be a solution, but it could be just a first step forward. We want to create a pathway forward from, from these problems. And whether we, we say, the next step forward for us, or we say, I'm a little bit stuck here. Can you support me with the next step forward? What should I do here? But we want to be moving forward because putting our problems on the table just creates a mess. And that's okay. We need messes at times. It's like reorganizing your closet. You know, the only way to do it is you got to get messy. You got to pull everything out of the closet. It gets messy. And then you create structure in the closet and then you put everything back. And then next time you open the closet, there's just flow, right? But we couldn't have got to that flow without the chaos. So we've got to put it all on the table. We got to pull everything out of the closet. And so pulling things out of the closet, putting it on the table is the first step. The second is starting to introduce structure to that chaos, right? Okay, here's where I would like to organize this. This is, I think the first step that I can take towards that. The other thing, sometimes there isn't a first step because sometimes it was about something in the past. And if that is the case, that there isn't a step forward that you can take now, or you can't seem to find that step forward now, the step is asking yourself this question. What lesson have I learned from this? And it might be a lesson that you've learned from your own mistake or your own challenge. It may also be the lesson that you've learned from your partner's mistake or your partner's challenge. This way we've developed this growth mentality in relationship of no matter what the challenge or struggle is, I am going to choose to learn from it. And not only do you get to learn from it, but if you can share that with your partner, they also get to learn from it. And in fact, it is always inspiring for the partner to know that you are choosing to learn from it. So that can be your next step forward. So first step is saying everything that's unsaid, right? Putting it on the table. Second step is considering what is the pathway forward or what is it that I have learned from that experience. The final step is sharing appreciation. So we want to finish in, in gratitude or appreciation and thanking either our partner or ourselves or both for whatever it is that we'd like to thank them for. It might be for being in this experience, for simply feeling the severity of the challenge. It might be the appreciation of their vulnerability of speaking to the challenge. 
It might be the appreciation of how they've supported you through the challenge or how they allowed you to support them through the challenge. Whatever it is, make sure that you end on this note. So if you only have an hour in your container, make sure that you're ending, you save enough time at the end, you know, 10 to 15 minutes for appreciation. How can you finish with appreciation? Because the most important thing about any container is the opening and the closing, right? We wanna make sure we open it with integrity, open it in safety, and we close it so it doesn't stay open. And this conversation of all these struggles seep into the rest of our life, right? We wanna be able to say, all right, let's close this conversation for whatever it is that we've got done for today. Let's bring this to a close with appreciation and then let's go enjoy dinner. And knowing that the way that the brain and our nervous system, our biology works, is it really likes to close loops, right? Kind of like if you have your computer with a bunch of tabs open. Does anyone ever do this with like a thousand tabs open? It's like you look at your screen and it's just overwhelming just looking at it. Closing the loops, closing the conversations, coming to a clear ending is like closing all of those tabs. All of a sudden, there's not so much to focus on. You've got one thing. And you can really be present with that one thing. So do yourself a favor, close some tabs, close some conversations, close the loop. And there might be many loops open, right? And again, this might not just be one conversation. This might be many conversations over a long period of time. There may be lifetimes worth of loops for you to close. But just close one at a time. Take that first step, first step. Let's make small, actionable change, right? Because trying to do everything all at once, it's never gonna work. Trying to please everyone all the time, it's never gonna work. Let's just take one step towards what it is that you can do to close just even one loop today and make your life just that much easier. I hope that this was helpful for you today. If you have questions, if you have comments, please pop them in the comment section below. Make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any more of these episodes. I have a ton of free content coming out on here. Uh, I really would love for you to be able to catch it as well. I'd love to hear from you if you have a review. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to rate it five stars on Apple Podcasts and write a review. I will read all of them. I sincerely appreciate you being here because being here was a commitment to your marriage or your long-term relationship. And know that challenge is normal. Challenge is normal. How you face that challenge will make or break your relationship. So as always, sending you lots of love. Thank you again for being here and we'll see you in the next episode. Hello, you beautiful souls. Thank you for listening to the Embodied Relationship Podcast with Brady Mack. I wanna to introduce to you a program for those of you who are in relationship, who are potentially married or just in a longer term relationship and might be feeling stuck or uncertain or simply craving more intimacy in your long-term relationship. The program that I would love to introduce to you is my signature program, which is the Embodied Relationship Council. And this is a journey where you get to embark on opening the heart and exploring the power of mindfulness, emotional healing, as well as the science of lasting connection. And it's not just about the spark, it's about creating conscious love that evolves over time and actually thrives with more time together. And so this is a, a space for a conversation for you and your partner to come together and to experience what it's like to grow together in love and understand 
the warm, loving embrace of each other's souls. Through the joys, through the challenges, we learn how to overcome all of this through conscious love. So if you're craving a love that really feels like home, a connection that nourishes your heart, I implore you to check out Embodied Relationship Council. And let's deep dive into your soul's growth, your soul's liberation, and the magic of conscious love together. If you're interested in joining the Embodied Relationship Council, click the link in the show notes, and I look forward to seeing your application come in. Peace and love, everybody.